Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida. I'm an eye surgeon. I earned my livelihood doing eye surgery. Now, it's an inevitability that all of us eventually will develop cataracts. Cataract, quite simply, the lens in the eye gets gray and cloudy, vision slips, and then we need a five-minute outpatient laser procedure, which will sharpen visual acuity tremendously. So setting aside cataract procedure, which again, everyone sooner or later will need. The key thing and the reason for today's talk is we wanna prevent unnecessary surgery. So how do we do that? So there are several key pointers today. Number one, when you're doing work and projects around the house, working on your car, you always wanna make sure you have safety goggles on between hammering nails and sawing and chiseling and the various activities that we're doing, unfortunately, things do fly into the eye. At least 10 times a week, I personally will pull things out of a cornea. Glass, metal, wood splinters. Now, usually we're fortunate that they're superficial. We can remove them readily in the office. It takes two, three, four minutes. But sometimes, God forbid, these objects, like the little piece of a head of a nail, can penetrate all the way through the eye, requiring major surgery in an operating room. These things are preventable with correct safety protection. Now, interestingly, especially with us in South Florida, before and after the storm, we see a tremendous uptick in the number of corneal injuries, ocular injuries in general. Why? So between putting up all the plywood, putting out the shutters, making all the preparations, the hammering, the sawing, the drilling, things get into the eye. After the, after the storm passes, the cleanup, whether it's removing the plywood, putting the shutters back to their normal position, removing all the trees and branches and debris, things fly into the eye. So while we're in a rush to get ready for the storm, and we're eager to clean up after the storm, instead of the usual maybe 10 eye injuries a week that I'll see, quite frequently we'll see 20, 30, 40, just like we did before and after Hurricane Irma. So that protection's super important. Number two recommendation, there are certain physical activities where we know there's a very marked increase in eye injuries. Playing paintball, People think it's benign, it's not. There are frequent eye injuries, bleeds to the eye, major trauma requiring surgery. BB guns, pellet guns, things of that nature, penetrating injuries to the eye, sometimes they're even inoperable, unfortunately. So these activities, I personally, I would include boxing in the list. With the tremendous blows to the eye, retinal detachments can occur. Sometimes the retinal detachments are major, and even those can be inoperable. So there are certain activities that are considered leisure activities, but it's a definite danger to the human eye, and one can prevent surgery by preventing these type of activities. Then there are other things in the normal course of events. So for example, when we're outside, daylight hours, you always want to make sure you have sunglasses on. With sunglass protection, the incidence of eyelid cancer drops dramatically. That could be major reconstructive surgery to remove an eyelid tumor and the reconstructive process. Also, there can be growths on the wall of the eye. When they're smaller, they're called pinguaculas. They get larger, they're called pterygium. The pterygium will start to grow over the eye, blocking vision. That requires major surgery to dig them out. Again, it's preventable by having correct sunglass protection. And other damages to the eye from the sun as well, with the sun protection, makes a very, very huge difference. Um, other things that are very helpful is for many systemic conditions. So let's talk about, give you an example, diabetics. Diabetics, unfortunately, the blood vessels can leak. When the blood vessels leak in the back of the eye, that's called either diabetic retinopathy or diabetic maculopathy. By keeping the blood sugars low, crucially important. There is a blood test that's taken every three months in diabetics called a hemoglobin A1C. Again, hemoglobin A1C. 
Keeping that level at a low level is hugely important. I'll give you an example. Hemoglobin A1C level of 8. If someone's conscientious, they get the level down to 7. Going from 8 to 7 is 1% decrease. While that might not sound a lot, uh, like a lot, that 1% decrease is a 30% reduction in chances of bleeding in the back of the eye. Diabetics also, it's important to have exercise and to be careful with dessert snacks, things like that. Another thing that can result in procedures, macular degeneration. If God forbid there's bleeding in the back of the eye, this can result in the necessity of shots called intravitreal injection, where there's a lot of preventative things. For example, simply by not smoking greatly decreases the chance of macular degeneration. Again, going back to sunglass protection. If those have any signs of macular, like drusen, by having taking vitamins called ARIDS2, can have a profoundly beneficial effect. Eating things such as fish, salmon in particular, very helpful. And then when working on digital devices, having blue blocker can be helpful as well. So there are a lot of preventative things that can be done starting with the yard work, the car work, having safety glasses, refraining from activities where the paintball, the BB guns, the pellet guns, wearing sunglasses, and then with different systemic conditions where the eyes can be affected, being very conscientious and diligent can have a profound effect. Now, I'm encouraging everyone to please go to the website, www.myeyesurgeons.com. Dr. Nathan Klein, my partner, and I are very avid believers in ocular preventative care. On the website, you'll see a section ocular preventative care, and then in many other sections, a lot of the topics which we talked about, they're elaborated upon in great detail. Thank you very much.